Hi there, I'm Jeff Kleinman, Editor-in-Chief of BevNet, with David Smith, the CEO of Fast Growing High Brew Coffee. David, how's it going? It's going well, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, tell us about what's been happening with High Brew in the past year. High Brew is still growing very quickly. The category is still growing very quickly, as you know. So we're riding the wave. We're riding the cold brew coffee trend. There's been a lot of innovation across the category in the past couple of months. It feels like everyone is shoving bubbles into the product. So show us what you got here. So our newest addition to the family is a sparkling cold brew. You know, we really were playing around with this last year as a nitro, and you saw that whole trend. We found that it was pretty hard to make a consistent quality product in a RTD package. The nitros work really well in a, in a keg, on a tap. Some of the cans are, you know, it's like if they're a month old, they could be great. If they're four months old, they might be flat. So it was just a, a quality uh, consistency issue. And so we started playing around with carbonation and, and, and bubbles. Um, it's much more consistent. Uh, it's, it's, it's very refreshing. We did some focus studies around a few different cities in the country and found it was very, very well received. So um, as the category continues to grow, I think people are going to look for more usage occasions and more ways to get their caffeine fix. And You think the American coffee consumer has moved to the point where they want coffee in other states? I think the whole iced coffee trend over the last five years has really pushed people into a lot of different usages. Um, I mean, you know, it used to just be a hot cup of coffee in the morning, and now we see a lot of cold coffee in mid-afternoon, mid-morning. Mid David, why are we seeing this explosion of carbonation in coffee right now? I think the trend is just starting. There have been, a, you know, like we just said, there's a couple brands that have come out and, and now we're doing it. But we've seen an explosion in sparkling in other categories. Sure. You know, so look at water. I mean, it's really getting going. Um, we're seeing a decline in CSDs continue. Yep. So I think all of that stuff combined has given us an opportunity to, um, you know, deliver a caffeine fix in a, in a new vehicle. How competitive is cold brew coffee right now? It's very competitive. And I think the beverage industry in general is just competitive. You know, it's like, look at the, the population continues to grow. More and more people continue to launch brands every day. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot more challenging and it takes more capital and resources uh, than it used to. You know, the last time I did this, it, was, it felt like a, a, it was quite a bit easier. I'm just wondering, how much time do you think is left in the coffee boom that we're seeing? I mean, are we at the start? We at peak cold brew now, or? The clock is ticking. You know, I don't know how many more brands are gonna carve their way into the space. Um, buyers are looking for a point of difference and they already have quite a few products on the shelf. So you've got to go to those guys with a real fact-based story to, to carve something out. And that gets harder and harder as the, as the you know, category develops. So one of your key distributors is Dr. Pepper Snapple. Yep. And obviously there have been some big changes in process there. Um, how has that filtered out to the allied brands who are working with them? I haven't met with the leadership team yet over at Keurig. Um, so time will tell. It's hard for me to really speculate without really understanding their longer term strategy and, and the innovation pipeline they have behind all their current brands. But as far as the allied brands go, I think as long as they fit into that you know, strategy, it's, it's going to be good for everybody. And we certainly know that it's been a big part of Dr. Pepper's overall strategy. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great for those guys. And um, I think it's a really exciting time. It's going to be really interesting to see you know, this new company that delivers hot and cold beverages um, to all channels with all different routes to market. You know, it's almost like a little bit of a turning tide that we've seen over the last 30, 40 years where if you were a DSD brand, it was the only way you could get to the store. Whether it was the most efficient route to market or not, that's how you had to do it. Um, I think this uh, Keurig Dr. Pepper deal is going to be a step in a different direction for the first time where you know you really look at 
what is the most efficient way to get to that channel? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Does it, does, it, does, it, does it, it might be direct, it might be more, more e-com, there might be more, uh, you know, DSD is great for small format, for, for C stores and Trug. Is it the best route to club? You know, maybe, maybe not, but um, I think it's going to be really exciting to see how this all develops, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time for our industry. We'll keep on innovating and keep on trucking, David. Sounds Thank, good. Thank thanks you, Jeff. very much. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it.